Hi, and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2007 Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 5.7 liter engine. The complaint is today is that the, uh, the customer was driving. The check engine light was illuminated previously, but as he was driving, the oil pressure light lit up and it stayed lit. He said periodically it'll turn off and then every couple of minutes or so it'll turn back on and he hears like a bell ringing inside the vehicle. So I'm gonna bring you in there. I'm gonna show you what's going on. The oil pressure light is on. Uh, he did drive it in uh, and when he did dro drive it in, there is no knocking or, or tapping or anything going on inside the engine, which is a good thing because we know that it didn't spin a uh, bearing or, or, or a few, uh, oil pump failure or anything like that. Um, of course, the first thing we did is we checked the oil and as the customer tells me, he checked the oil himself and he added a couple of quarts to it. And uh, after I just checked it now, I can see he's over by a couple of quarts. So it's never good to add oil until you know for sure that it needs it. Um, let me bring you in now. I'm gonna show you what, uh, what's going on and then we're gonna figure out what's, what's happening with this car. So come on, let's take a walk in there. Okay, so this is what's going on with it. Let me start it up and as you can see the check engine lights on and also the oil pressure light is lit also uh, now the reason I do have this running um, and I'm not concerned about damaging the engine is because there is no noise underneath it the customer has been driving it for a couple of days if not a week already with that light on so I have a feeling that the oil pressure switch is going to be the issue but let's grab our scanner and uh, let's see what the codes are Okay, and it's just as I suspected, it's a, P, a P0520 engine oil pressure sensor circuit. Most likely it's going to be a bad um, oil pressure switch, but, well, okay. Alright, well that, that could account for why, his, um, for why his, his check engine light was on previously before the, um, the oil light came on possibly but uh, all right um, let's lift this up on the lift and I'm gonna you know what let's go back to the computer uh, uh, wiring diagram and we're gonna take a look at the diagram on here and we're gonna test the circuit to make sure that the circuit is good before we go any further okay so looking at this uh, at this uh, this uh, diagram here it's a fairly simple circuit uh, it's a three wire connector on the back of the switch we're just gonna unplug it we're gonna check for a five volt reference we're gonna make sure it has a good ground and this is the signal wire that actually goes up to the uh, to turn that light off for the for the uh, for the oil uh, pressure. So uh, it's going to be a little tough to film this, but I'll do the best I can underneath the car. So uh, all right, let's lift it up and let's take a look and see where it's located. Okay, and this is where our oil pressure um, sender is actually located. It looks like it's down underneath the vehicle. Um, so we're going to have to lift it up. We'll pull that cover down underneath the bottom, and we'll see what that switch looks like. All right, as you can see, looking underneath here, it's a little bit tight where we have to go. Where we need to go is actually right inside, up in the back, right back in there. We're going to need to get in there. So that's where the switch is located, so uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're not going to take the filter out. We're actually going to remove the skid plate underneath the bottom right here. We're going to take the skid plate off to gain access to it. So uh, let's do that and uh, we'll see how much room we get. Somebody put the wrong bolts in there.
let's see how much room we have up underneath here now. All right, I'll bring it up there so you can see what's going on, get an idea. It's going to be a little bit difficult to film this, but I'll do the best I can. That's the switch right up inside there. So uh, I'm going to unplug that plug right there, and um, we'll take that out, and I hope you can see what I'm doing, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, and now that we have this unplugged here, we're going to get our, our um, voltmeter, and we're going to test for power and ground. And if that checks out okay, then we're going to go ahead and replace that, that switch up there. I know it's a little dark, but that's where the switch is located, right there. Uh, I know that the switch here is no good by looking at it because, as you can see, it's leaking oil inside there. So either way, we're changing that switch. Um, but let me just check this, and, uh, and then we'll come back. Okay, as you can see, it's a really tight spot up there, but I just want to show this to you. Our voltage is okay. We have 4.99 volts, so we know that we have the power to the switch where we're supposed to. We're going to check the ground now to make sure, but uh, I'm pretty confident we're just going to have a bad switch. So before I go any further testing anything else, we're going to place the order for the switch. Okay, well I don't know how you're going to be able to see what I'm doing up here, but I'll give it a shot the best I can. We're going to get up here with a socket, we're going to put it onto this sensor right here, and we're going to take this sensor out. Now I did check that ground, and the ground was good, so we know that the sensor itself is no good. Okay, once we have it loosened up, then we can just take it out by hand. You want to make sure you have a bucket down below because you may leak a little bit of oil, of course. I'm going to take that out. that is our oil switch so all right let me uh, wait for the new one to get here sure we actually matched it up to make sure it's the right one we're going to screw it back in up here all right then we're going to tighten it in with our ratchet. Now you're not going to go crazy and tighten it in and break it off because it only is copper. We're just going to snug it in there. Now we have, there was Teflon on the threads so it doesn't have to be real tight. You just snug it in there. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug our harness back in. Lock it in place. Let's bring you in there, maybe you can see a little better. That's where it's located, right up in there. We plugged our plug back in. And uh, let's see over there. Got a plug back in, snap that red tab back on. And now before we do anything, before we put our cover back on, we're gonna go up and we're gonna start this up. Okay, here we go. Now I just wanna point this out to you. We're actually up in the air. I didn't put the car down because I didn't want to lower it down and bring it back up. We just climbed up the ladder and we're up here. All right, here we go. We're going to turn the key on. That's a normal thing for that light to light up. It's going through its test right now to make sure that the circuit is, is, is correct. And now we start it. The light should go out and stay out. And it did. All right. Um, you know what, let's turn the scanner on here for a second. We're gonna go in here. 
and we're going to clear the codes out. Do this one a little different. The vehicle cannot be running to clear these codes. Okay, that should do it. Let's go back. No codes. All right, now we're just going to let this run for just a minute here just to make sure but I want to just point out one more thing to you we're going to go back into the data for the uh, that 520 we're going to go back into the 520 loading the information in right now okay there we go all right now I don't I don't know if I even showed you this before but the voltage was actually um, it was very low it was point I'm thinking like point four and the oil pressure was showing zero and as you can see our pressure is up in the normal range right now but that's where the switch itself had failed because it wasn't sending anything out through that signal wire back to the computer and that would uh, that would cause that to happen so all right let's go down uh, back to the bottom and let's wrap this up okay as you can see we're just checking to make sure that there's no leaks on that switch at all and it's nice and dry it's bone dry nothing's leaking our uh, red tab is locked back in place to keep that harness connected in there and that's it we're all done all right so uh, I'm not going to bore you with putting this cover I should say that cover back on. I think you can know how to do that. It's four screws and it's done. Okay, that's it. We're all done. All right, I just want to point out I did change the oil and filter on here because the oil was over that full mark by at least two, maybe three quarts. So it didn't make any sense to drain it out, only to try to get it to, a, to an even even on the, on the stick to where it's supposed to be. So we did do an oil change and filter at the same time. As you can see, it's running. The light is off. I'm going to take it for a road test. So uh, we're going to get this out the door. And then on to the next one. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.